I've been studying Spanish for seven years total. First, it was three years of unenthusiastic high school classes, and then it was four years of active study through media immersion, which is the part that I count. I'd estimate that after two and a half years of active study, I reached B2. And right now, I consider myself to be at a C1 level, and I'm trying to get to C2 and beyond. It's about time that I talk about my daily routine and where my Spanish is in terms of comprehension and output. This is probably going to be a lengthy video, so timestamps will be in the description. Let's get into it. Let's see that the language is divided into four sections. Reading, writing, speaking, listening. My listening would be the best, followed closely by reading. Then my writing would be third, and then my speaking is the worst out of all four. I can listen to almost everything I come across with ease, and in fact I usually listen to my podcasts at 1.5x speed in order to save time. For podcasts such as Radio Ambulante and El Hilo, those are pretty easy to understand. I'd say the peak of my vocabulary without coming across any new words would be a podcast of Historias Perdidas. The hardest podcast I've ever come across would be Un Libro Una Hora, which is pretty much an hour-long summary of a book, so an audiobook pretty much. And even though I can understand the story, there's just so many new words that I come across. But what gives me some comfort is that I wouldn't even use some of those words in real life, or they're words in English that I don't even know, so that gives me comfort. I don't really watch that much Spanish YouTube, but occasionally I'll watch Victor Barca for technology, and also um, The Wild Project for like a, a Joe Rogan style of podcast. And ironically, the stuff that tricks me up is actually the English loan words. Just like with any language, the English loan words that are imported into Spanish are pronounced in a Spanish accent. So that can make it a little bit harder for me to understand, so I might have to repeat it a couple times in order to get it. I spend most of my immersion time listening to podcasts and reading novels, both of which are pieces of content where I'm, I'm used to knowing everything that I come across, or at least almost everything. So because of this, when I'm watching a TV show on Netflix, even when I miss one word every once in a while, it feels like a big deal. When I want to watch a TV show for the pure enjoyment sake of it, then I'll watch it in Spanish with the Spanish subtitles, and sometimes it feels like it's not even another language. When watching TV shows without subtitles though, I might miss a word every couple minutes, and even though I can get what the story is, it might be that one word that really puts into place what the scene is talking about, or it just might be that one word that I don't necessarily need it, but I'd still like to know it. It kind of makes me feel like an imposter being able to understand audiobooks at 1.5x speed, but then watching shows like uh, Criminal Spain or Money Heists, where I might miss a word every once in a while. In order to try to remedy this, I use the program Megaku, which is like a, an Anki extension where you can quickly make sentence audio cards from Netflix and import them directly into Anki. So I use that program for, um, when I'm watching a show without subtitles, I use that program for only the clips that I don't understand the one word without subtitles. Reading for the Matter is something that's pretty close to my listening skills, and it's feeling pretty close to how I'd feel to reading stuff in English. I'd only consider it to be a little bit less because I didn't really start reading until two and a half years into my active study. Reading novels is something I've improved immensely on, and even though there might be anywhere from five to ten words in a single page that I don't know, that doesn't impede me from understanding the story. A fair amount of the time when I look up a new word in a novel or um, an article on a website, it would be a word that I would never unironically use in English, or it might be a word I don't even know in English. Having recently having gone from reading only novels to reading articles online, like on elpais.com, it's a different set of vocabulary which keeps things fresh. I can tell what the article is trying to say, but occasionally there might be that one word where uh, it really unlocks the puzzle to what the entire, uh, to what like a certain paragraph means. Writing is only something I've recently been getting into over the past month or two. If English should be like a 100% level of what my true intention would be, then Spanish would be maybe only like an 80 or 90%. There's always some sort of slang term or colloquial speech that would help me sound uh, more native or more natural. One of the things I struggle with the most is converting my passive vocabulary into active vocabulary. It's the worst feeling ever when you know how you know how to say a word, but you just can't recall it on the spot. One thing I found out though is that physically saying a word, be it through uh, writing or speaking, brings it from my passive vocabulary into my active vocabulary. Just like my massive Anki streak, I've also started a new streak where it's focused on writing and not just flashcards. On Reddit, there's a specific subreddit called r slash write streak es, where basically I write a paragraph or two based on a topic, and then a native speaker corrects my mistakes. You never really realize how many mistakes you make until a native speaker points them out. I made so much progress in only the past month of writing, and even though I've made a lot of progress, there's still so much room to improve, which is why I'll do it for the foreseeable future. Speaking would be the worst area out of the other three regions. Similar to how I do in writing, I can say what I want to say, but I wouldn't say it exactly how a native speaker would say it, and I might phrase stuff a little bit weirdly. 
I make mistakes in the heat of the moment, stutter sometimes, and it's something that generally stresses me out. My accent is also something that I have to work on. And even though it's gotten a lot better over the years, it's still something that I really have to improve. There's vowels where the stress is placed and the distinction too. There's just a lot of nitpicky things that I have to improve on. One of the biggest things that I don't do that native Spanish speakers would do is actually using their hands when they talk. It's so much harder than it looks. And the fact that I can't even do it in English without looking like I'm trying to do sign language or something means that this is an area of uh, my life that I generally have to improve on. I have a playlist called Unscripted Conversation where I just speak freely without a script for a couple of minutes. As of the moment, I only have two videos on there, but I promise I plan to upload more there soon. I kind of put all my eggs into the Spain slang basket, and I haven't really studied Mexican slang that much. However, given that most of the content that I watch is either from Spain or from a, a neutral Latin American dialect, it doesn't affect me that much. However, given here in the States that Mexican Spanish would be the biggest uh, dialect of Spanish, uh, it's something that's on my radar, and I know I really suck at it. Numbers is something that I've really sucked at, but I've gotten a lot better. And even though I have made progress, even numbers that are over like a thousand just takes me a little bit longer to fully grasp than if we're like under a thousand. So to remedy this, I'm using the website langpractice.com where it basically says uh, a random number, I think up to like a trillion or something crazy. And you just type in the number that they say. And it's for a bunch of different languages too. So I highly recommend it. 82. 21. 42. 35. She. Si shi jiao. Si shi ar. Ai shi yi. Subjunctive mood triggers is something that feels so arbitrary sometimes. For native Spanish speakers who don't know what I'm talking about, it would be the difference between saying bones and bongas. I'm paying more attention to when the subjunctive is triggered, but it's still something that I've not mastered yet. There's this one certain verb tense, but I don't know the name for it exactly. It's basically a reflexive verb with the indirect object in the middle, so it'd be something like se le olvido. Understanding that specific conjugation still shakes me up sometimes. And of course, I will always continue to say el when I should say la, and vice versa. If there's one thing that gives you away as non-native, it's that. I constantly switch between podcasts, articles, uh, Netflix shows, novels, and a bunch of stuff to immerse in. For podcasts, I like Pretty much everything that's under Ser Podcast, Podium Podcast, and RNA. I'll probably show a screenshot or two of all the podcasts that I have in my library. I'll show some of my favorites on the screen, but some podcasts that I always come back to are Radio Ambulante and El Hilo. When listening to a podcast, I look up words while I'm listening, instead of just listening to it straight through and then listening to it uh, again. And this helps me to really save time on stuff that I understand almost everything completely, but just a couple of words. And of course, I put all these new words into my Spanish donkey deck. For novels, I'm currently on Largo Petalo de Mar and Cien Años de Solida. I read first, underlining the new words I come across, and then once I'm done reading, I look up all the new words in my dictionary. This helps me to tolerate ambiguity and really get the most out of my experience. And of course, all these new words go into Anki as well. As I previously mentioned, I don't really watch that much Spanish YouTube, other than Victor Barca for technology and The Wild Project for like a, a Joe Rogan style podcast. For news articles, I go on usually El País and choose something random. I read the article once, and even though I can understand generally what, what is being said, there might be that one or two words that really completes the puzzle and helps me understand a couple of paragraphs. I put all these new words into Anki, along with the sentence in which I found it. Then I might go into that uh, that subreddit, writestreak.es, where I write a paragraph or two and summarize my thoughts about it. This goes two words with one stone because I can help uh, increasing my vocabulary and I can help uh, myself outputting. For Netflix, it's been a while since I've just sat down and watched a TV show like completely through without looking up that many new words. I've almost finished the first season of Money Heist and I'm currently watching Criminal Spain and using Megaku, that's that software, to try to make sentence audio cards for the sentences that I don't understand on the spot. Some occasional extra stuff that I do is voice shadowing, where basically a native speaker says something and then I try to replicate what that native speaker has said with the best of my abilities. But despite this, I wouldn't really say I'm the most, what's the word, consistent to following a voice shadowing schedule. To also try to improve my accent, I'll basically find a piece of text that I've never read before and read it out loud. When you see a word, you don't have to, your brain doesn't have to look at every single letter in order to understand what the word is or what the word means. We build up this skill when we're kids reading in our native language or first language, so it has to be done when we're older in our second language as well. All right, so it's time for Anki, the way I memorize all of the information that I've come across. 
For Spanish, it takes me about 30 to 35 minutes to get through all my Anki decks. And this is a, on top of about, at minimum, 30 minutes of immersion every day. My main vocabulary deck is the one that takes the most time because I take words that I take from uh, Netflix, podcasts, TV shows, and things like that, and I import them into this deck. I used to use Spanish Dict as my primary dictionary, but now I'm starting to use Word Reference because Word Reference has monolingual definitions. A monolingual definition would basically be where instead of having a Spanish word defined by an English word, you'd have a Spanish word defined by another Spanish word. I really regret not having made a lot of monolingual Spanish dictionary cards in the past because it really makes learning new words so much easier. If a word has multiple meanings, and of course it usually does, then I'll put uh, three or four definitions onto that card with the corresponding example sentences. In general, I try to memorize about three or four definitions at a single time, but sometimes it's just way too many to put on a single card. I'll get to how I deal with that problem later in the video. What I've recently been practicing is taking the sentence in which I found that card and putting that sentence in the Anki card as well. I think knowing how the word was said in a given context can serve as a better memory than just having an example sentence pulled from a dictionary on there. As I previously mentioned, sometimes I have uh, Spanish words that I don't even know the English definitions for, and these are especially words like flower names, uh, plant names, and words like those. There's a nice program called ShareX where basically I have it set up to where I press a single hotkey, then there's a resizable selection tool that shows up, then I select an image um, of like the flower or the plant name or whatever, and then I'll put that into my Anki card. My nitpicky grammar deck isn't something that I really need, but it's something that I really like going over anyway. Five or six months ago on studyspanish.com, I went through a lot of nitpicky grammar stuff in order to refresh my memory. Now keep in mind, I was already at maybe a low C1 when I did this, so I was already fluent, so I didn't necessarily need it, but it was something that I really wanted to do because I hadn't taken formal Spanish classes since Spanish 2 in high school. So it was just something to help refresh my memory. I even did end up legitimately learning a couple new things. What I do now is go on the website wikilingua.org, which has way too much information, honestly. And it's basically like a Wikipedia, but for the Spanish language itself. And the cherry on top is that the site is written in Spanish. Making monolingual grammar cards is something that's too much to pass up on. My history deck contains maps and regions of Spain, so therefore the deck itself is pretty small. I suspended a lot of cultural information and history because I wanted the information itself to be in Spanish because it's better to study a language in the language itself rather than in English. One of the things I really want to do is learn the entirety of Spanish history from beginning to end. So if you have any uh, resources on like in-depth Spanish history that's written in Spanish, then please let me know. Now I used to have a deck called uh, Corrections where I basically took the corrections from the native speaker correcting my grammar on that website. I put the corrections from the native speaker on the front and then my incorrect version on the back. However, despite this, I decided to suspend all the cards in there because I don't want my own incorrect information going or potentially going into my long-term memory. You might remember where I mentioned earlier about what if I had a word that had multiple definitions and I couldn't possibly memorize all those in a single, uh, single Augie card. That's where this deck comes in, where I make sentence cards out of each definition of the word. This helps me acquire every possible version of what the word could mean. I also use this deck for sentence mining, where I basically take, I use that Migaku program to sentence mine uh, Spanish TV shows where you can make sentence audio cards out of specific clips really quickly. That piece of software is so much more efficient than the previous way I was doing it using ShareX and a bunch of other programs. I plan on taking the Spanish C2 test sometime in 2022. Hopefully I can register the next time there's an appointment, so fingers crossed. Even when I inevitably do pass C2, I still want to have as much of a native Spanish accent as I can on top of knowing all the history, culture, slang, and every, every little Spanish thing that there is. Like for example, could I do math in the language? Would I know the history terms that a native speaker would know? And what about food terms and cooking recipes? What about sports terms? The general gist is, what can I do in my native language that I couldn't do in Spanish? Right now I'm going through math, and I want to be able to talk about math up to a, about a calculus level. The channel Matematicas Profe Alex is a goldmine for Spanish-speaking math content. On top of learning how to do math in Spanish, it's a genuine refresher too. Okay, that was a lot of information. Time for a summary. On average, I spend around an hour a day or more studying Spanish. I do a minimum of around 30 minutes every day for immersion through uh, listening to content or reading, and then my Anki deck, or I guess all of my Spanish Anki decks, take me about 30 minutes to get through. Combining writing every day with occasional voice shadowing and all this other stuff, it really adds up pretty quickly. However, it's not like I do 
every single method that I mentioned in this video in a single day. My workflow is more like listen to a podcast for 20 minutes, maybe read an online article, then put all the new words in Anki. Then maybe the next day, I'll fill up my grammar deck with nitpicky grammar information, um, go through a monolingual um, set of idioms for Spanish, then I also might read my novel for that day. Then the next day, I might sentence mine a little bit of a TV show and then do some voice shadowing. It can be a little hectic, but what stays the same is that I listen every day, write every day, and do all my Anki cards every day. All right, that's it for this video. I know this video was a bit of a longer one, or at least that's what I'm expecting, so thanks for just sticking around. If you liked the video, feel free to like it. If you disliked the video, however, then tell me in the comments why you disliked it. And stay tuned for upcoming content. The next video I do will be basically this exact same video, but for Mandarin instead. For personal updates on language learning, feel free to follow my Twitter at GeoSpiral. And as always, see you guys next time. I have a playlist called Unscripted Conversation, where I speak unscriptedly. That's not a word. I know this one is... In order... In order to try to remedy it... Reb... In order to remedy it... In order to try to remedy it... In order to... I estimate that I reached B2 in about two and a half years. And right now, in about... Uh...